And a special welcome to our visitors. I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. It is November 14th, 2013. The time is 7 p.m. And uh, at this time, if everyone would please rise and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Jackie, will you please take the roll? President Janner? Here. Vice President Riley? Here. Commissioner Egan? Present. Commissioner Heidi? Here. Commissioner Ori? Here. Commissioner Todd? Here. Commissioner Young? Here. Next item on our agenda is uh, awards and recognitions. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Brian Costin to the podium uh, up here in front. Brian represents the Illinois Policy Institute and we will be presenting the Park District with the Sunshine Award for Website Transparency. Brian, welcome. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Um, a little bit about the Illinois Policy Institute. We're a, a nonprofit 501c3 think tank. Um, and one of the issues that we care very, very deeply about is government transparency, and that's why I'm here tonight. Um, for a number of months, uh, we've been working with the Naperville Park District. Uh, the staff to help um, the district to become more transparent and meet the standards that we've laid out in our 10-point transparency checklist. Um, a little bit about the local transparency project. We've graded over 300 uh, local government organizations across the state of Illinois. This is counties, municipals, park districts, libraries, township, and everything else. And uh, we give this award to a very select few that score an 80% or higher on our 10-point transparency checklist, which includes things such as uh, contact information for elected officials, administrators, information about board meetings such as this, uh, Freedom of Information Act information, uh, uh, annual budgets, annual audits, um, compensation, um, lobbying, taxes, and uh, so, We've only had about 45 government agencies in the entire state that have received this award, and Naperville Park District is the highest scoring park district that we've ever graded in the state of Illinois with a 90% score. Um, so we wanted to, to take this occasion to um, thank the Naperville Park District for their work in making government more transparent for their citizens and taxpayers. And I wanted to present the Sunshine Award to uh, President. Thank you very much. Brian and everyone, on behalf of the Naperville Park District uh, Board of Commissioners and all of us here, I'm honored to accept the Sunshine Award on, uh, on behalf of the Park District. Both our board and our staff understand the importance of transparency, and we've worked diligently to preserve uh, transparency here in our operations, including our website. That said, continuous improvement is always something that's essential to our operations, so we will always strive to do better uh, year after year uh, to the, for the benefit of our community. So, Brian, thanks uh, again for being here with us today, and uh, we really appreciate this important recognition. Thank you. Okay, at this time, uh, I would like to uh, recognize some young athletes in our Shotokan Karate program who recently competed in the World Shotokan Karate Championship in Liverpool, England. So at this time, uh, I'd like to call uh, up to the podium here uh, some students, Eddie Allegretti, Ethan Pearson, and Michaela McKibben, and uh, Mr. John DePasquale, the founder of the Illinois Shotokan Karate Club. If you folks can please join me here at the podium. Welcome. Team USA placed fifth overall at the championships, competing with 453 athletes from 28 countries. 
Each of our Naperville competitors is a black belt who trains at the Naperville Park District with the Illinois Shotokan Karate Clubs. We are proud to recognize these students for the following, accomplish, uh, for the following accomplishments. Eddie Allegretti, uh, Eddie, there you are. Come on up here real quick. Don't hurt him. <laughs> Thank you. you don't need, okay, you can bow, I suppose. Eddie here won a gold medal in the Children's Individual Committee. Am I saying that right, committee? Kumite, right? Kumite? okay. Uh, giving him the title of Shotokan World Champion in his age category. So congratulations, Eddie. I'm going to present you with a certificate here. Next, we'll go to Ethan Pearson. Congratulations, Ethan. Ethan uh, won second place in cadet team kata and third place in junior team kata. So congratulations to you, Ethan. And finally, uh, Michaela McKibben uh, won third place in the Junior Ladies Individual Committee. Thank you. And um, uh, congratulations to you, Michaela. At this time, I'd like to invite you, uh, Mr. De Pasquale, to say a few words if you'd like. try to make this short and sweet. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the commissioners uh, for all you do as far as giving uh, vision uh, to the staff and to the staff for your implementation of the programs. Uh, I work with about 74, 75 different park districts and I can say uh, Naperville is one of the, if not the best, for sure one of the, the best as far as facilities, as far as everything that you're providing for these athletes. And without your help, they wouldn't have a place to train, they wouldn't have a program to go to. And I want to thank you on behalf of the whole karate club, not just these three athletes. Um, one of the things I think that's a little bit special about our karate program is that uh, although we have these guys that are world level athletes, um, I'm also part of the little kids that we're, we're working with, you know. So we take everybody from what I call the recreational athlete you know, programs over at Naperville to the uh, obviously to the lead. So I just want to say thank you very much to the board and to the staff for all you do for the program. Thank you very much. Okay, once again, thanks for being here. And uh, one quick announcement related to this. The Naperville Park Dis District is proud to offer Shotokan karate classes. Prospective new karate students, if there's anyone out there, uh, may contact the Park District for more information on our offerings and how to register. So thanks again for being here. How about one more round of applause for our uh, competitors? Okay, and our final recognition here this evening is uh, a recognition uh, of high school golf players uh, and their achievements in the 2013 IHSA uh, Golf Championships and uh, some announcements related to that. Springbrook and Naperbrook Golf Courses, our two uh, public golf courses, serve as the home practice courses for our local high school golf teams. Tonight, we're proud to recognize several of the high school players who recently competed in the 2013 IHSA Golf Championships. At this time, I'd like to call uh, to the podium, if you can come up right here uh, like the other competitors did, uh, Taylor Aronson, Jason Mars, Bing Singsumali, and Jessica Ewan. If you can please uh, join us up here. Okay, we'll start with you, Taylor. Uh, Taylor Aronson, a student at Naperville North High School, finished eighth individually in the Class AA Girls State Championship. Uh, so congratulations to you, Taylor. Uh, we also want to congratulate the Naperville North Girls team for placing seventh as a team. So Taylor, if you can come up here, I've got a uh, special award for you.
Next, we'd like to uh, congratulate Jason Mars, a student at Wabonzi Valley High School who placed fifth individually in the Class 3A Boys State Championship. Excellent job, Jason. And then uh, we'd also like to c congratulate Bing Singh Sumali. Did I get that close? Oh, not here? Okay. Well, uh, maybe someone could get that to her. And then uh, finally, we congratulate uh, Neuqua Valley High School player Jessica Ewan for being the 2013 Class AA Girls State Champion. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, that's really, really is a great accomplishment. So we, we congratulate you and everyone here. Uh, we're proud of you and we look forward to welcoming our high school teams back to our public course at Springbrook and Naperbrook uh, next year. So thank you, congratulations. Okay, at this time, since we have a lot of, uh, a lot of visitors here, uh, presuming uh, to speak on uh, agenda item 10A, uh, we're gonna go ahead and move that up on the uh, agenda uh, out of respect for your time. So again, uh, thanks for being here, and uh, do we have a motion on this item? Move to approve ordinance uh, number 813, authorizing the acquisition of the property commonly known as 1760 Quincy Avenue, Naperville, Illinois. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Jackie, I assume these people are here to speak on this, uh, yes. on this item? Okay. President Danner, we have nine speakers for the agenda item. Um, we ask that you please observe the following guidelines during the public forum. When you come to the lectern to speak, please state your name and address. We ask that you limit your comments to no more than three minutes. Members of the audience are asked to be quiet and refrain from applauding. And the first speaker is Nancy Miner, followed by Adam Swanson and Michelle Anderson. Good evening. I'm Nancy Miner, Superintendent of Recreation at Western DuPage Special Recreation Association. As you may know, WDSRA is a special recreation cooperative formed by nine park districts, including the Naperville Park District, which is one of our founding members. Our mission is to provide year-round fun recreational programs to individuals of all ages who have physical, developmental, emotional, and sensory disabilities. On an annual basis, WDSRA offers 1,500 programs, trips, and special events, and serves more than 4,500 individu individuals each year. Naperville's registrations make up 30% of our program registrations. WDSRA is in full support of a new activity center to serve all residents of Naperville. With more than 37 years of dedication, to the special needs community of Naperville and innovative programming, our commitment to community-based recreation runs deep. We have heard from year, for years from our parents in Naperville that they would like more programs closer to home. In our most recent needs assessment survey, 8% of all respondents indicated that they do not participate in WDSRA programs due to programs being too far from their home. 6% of respondents reported having transportation problems to and from programs. If programs were closer to home and therefore more convenient, they would most likely participate. There's nothing more telling than what happened when we offered programs at the 95th Street facility. WDSRA offered seven new programs at the 95th Street facility. 56 attended those programs and 50 free 53 of them were from Naperville. To bring new programs closer to home delighted our parents. 
This 95th Street facility helps with classroom type programs, but not with active recreation programs we offer. We need additional active space for the 15 Special Olympic sports we offer. We have been used, um, using the carpeted gyms at the co-op school for all these years. The carpet presents a bit of a challenge for adults running up and down the floor playing basketball and floor hockey. It is almost impossible for our wheelchair basketball team to participate in this environment. Not to mention these elementary schools that are not age appropriate for teens and adults and scheduling around school activities has been difficult. More drop-in activity space would greatly benefit the individuals we serve. All of the other park districts in the WDSRA cooperative provide space for fitness that we utilize often. With all of today's focus on obesity, we are trying to instill good eating and exercise habits with our participant. A new facility with fitness space and a walking track would benefit all Naperville residents. The benefits of exercise for all go a long way to improve an individual's overall health. Help WDSRA continue to offer quality programs closer to home for Naperville residents and continue with our mission of the development of individuals through recreation. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. Nancy, thank you very much. Jackie, who's our next speaker? Next speaker is Adam Swanson, followed by Michelle Anderson. I am Adam Swanson. I live at 519 North Webster Street. I am active in the community. I supported an indoor neighborhood walk center. It would be a good place for my friends to meet and play sports. Now we play basketball and volleyball at school since. We are adults, athletes in special Olympics, but Sometimes we have to go to waiting or uh, make we can I on to play white ball because so never will schools are not open. We we want to be to participate in indoor activities in Neverwill where we live. I am a num number of Neverwill South Next South the Book Club. We came here to saw our supported for an indoor walk center. Will the Naperville South Next Chapter Book Club please stand up to show your support? We all want an indoor walk center in Neverville. Thank you. Adam, thank you very much. Jackie, who was our next speaker? Next speaker is Michelle Anderson, followed by Karen Corney. Hey, I am Michelle Anderson. My address is 1647 KRI Road, Nineveh, Illinois, 60565. Good evening. 
Nearville Park District Board of Commissioners. I am employed at Neighborville Businesses, and my friends live in Neighborville. I want to be in recreational programs with my friends in Neighborville. And the proposed activity center can make that possible. When I, when I was three years old, I started in Neverville Park District and Westwood programs. They have included preschool, music, sports, training, theater, day camps, social groups, and Special Olympic teams, time, location, and transportation are key factors for deciding on my activities because I rely on someone to drive me. I love dance classes and being on sports teams, my family has driven me to Bloomingdale and Glen Allen for weekly practices because these programs are, were, were not convenient or available for me in Neighborville. Um, recently, I started restaurant yoga and some classes with my friends at the 95th Street Park District building now. Now I am an adult. These classes are a big part of my fitness and wellness program. My social life is a very important to me, having more reservoir programs and teams in Neighborville would mean I could get to spend time with my friends and my community. And it would not require my family driving to other towns. There are many children and adults and their families in Neighborville who have the same desire that I have to participate in reservoir programs in Central Neighborville. I think the Pose Activity Center can make that happen for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Jackie, uh, who is our next speaker? Karen Corney, followed by Bev. Executive Director Ben-Gurry, President Janer, and members of the board. This evening, this evening I'm speaking on behalf of the growing senior population in Naperville. First of all, I'd like to commend you for providing the comprehensive programming for our seniors. The insight you have into what appeals to the seniors and what they need is evident in your programming guide. And you've even enlarged the font in the guide for the seniors so we can read it. A small group of seniors have been um, trying for the last four years to establish a structure in Naperville similar to what some of the neighboring communities have that provide better information about the services available and the information that the seniors need. And we're making some good progress. I also write the senior living column for the Naperville Sun and my readers have been positive about this project. We've met with the city already and we're revamping the website and that's moving along well. We met with Director McGurry and Mr. Wilson and they were enthusiastic about our initiative and suggested that we use the Rubin Center as a base for our senior services office. When the city website is ready, we'll meet with the Park District volunteers who now work at the Rubin Center and we'll hold a training session. 
So I think the new event center will be an important addition to the current programs available to the seniors and those with special needs. In reality, the walking track could have traffic jams of seniors getting their exercise. Walking is a favorite form of exercise for seniors, and when it gets cold and it gets dark early, it forces the seniors indoors. So what better place than a community facility where they can meet their friends, make new friends, and maintain and improve their health? Again, many thanks for your support of our efforts, and we in turn support yours. Thank you. Karen, thank you. Jackie, who's our next speaker? Next speaker is Bev, and after Bev is Christy Landorf. Hello, Bev Patterson Fryer, 24W035 Donwood Drive, Naperville, Illinois. I'm an old timer from Naperville. I don't think it's gonna be a surprise when I tell you I'm now a senior. So I'm here on behalf of, of seniors. Um, but I'm here to support this activity center that you're trying to get off the ground. Years ago, I was one of the very first stores in Fox Valley Mall, and my rent went up according to how many more stores occupied the building. But we had the mall walkers there every day. <clears throat> and I don't know whether any of you old timers remember Merrill Gregory, he bought a piano from me. So I allowed him to come in and sit for a break when he was walking around the mall. But uh, <laughs> I, I entertained quite a few uh, with the piano bench or an organ bench as they were walking around the mall. One of the questions I have is that the mall, they could have coffee and calories afterwards downstairs. Are we going to have a facility for that in this building where they can communicate with their friends? That's good. Another question I have is I've been on the board of Martin Avenue Apartments since 1985. I wonder if we could bus some of our residents out there to be mall walkers. Think about that. Because um, they can't walk. We're not a nursing home. This is uh, Martin Avenue Apartments is ambulatory people. So it would be nice if uh, we could use our bus to come out there. I went here in Naples, Florida, and one of the things that attracted me there was the classes that they have for senior citizens. So I came back with that in mind and I worked for quite a few years and talked Dr. Carroll into doing uh, backing classes for senior citizens. Um, Dr. Carroll embraced it. He said, Bev, this is something he had been wanting to have for quite a while. So it's off and running. <clears throat> The classes are well attended, um, but here I would like to give you some of the statistics. Uh, we started these, currently we have 851 lifelong students currently taking classes. 87% of those are Naperville citizens. In the past 30 months, we have had over 2,000 register for classes. Our catalog mailing list is to over 5,000 residents. In 2013, we offered over 125 different classes. You'll be amused that one of our best attended classes um, was online dating for seniors. <laughs> <laughs> but we're running out of space. Uh, so my question is, will there be perhaps some rooms in this activity center for some of our classes? We are so happy that we are already partnering with the Park District. You are offering one page of your new senior catalog to tell about three of our senior uh, classes. And I have two pass outs. One is the page that will be in your new senior brochure, which advertises and talks about three of our classes that we're having. And the other is our catalog that we have for the seniors. And in our new catalog, we will be telling, uh, we will be talking about some of the 
offerings that the park district has. So I'm really enthused about the collaboration between us and, and the park district. I think that uh, this is healthy and we're very grateful for the park district cooperation. Karen touched upon the senior website we've been working on. We're developing more and more opportunities for seniors and we have two goals have a website where anyone can find all the different opportunities available to them. And number two, just one phone number to someone that knows all the uh, available services for the senior citizens. We have been told that 13% of the population in Naperville are seniors, that's currently. That is not counting the baby boomers that will soon be entering that uh, statistic. We are striving to present a great quality of life for seniors and this new activity center, I feel and we feel is just the ticket. Naperville is known as a kid-friendly city, but let's also make it known as a senior-friendly city. Thank you. Bev, thank you very much. Jackie, who's our next speaker? Next speaker is Christy Landor, followed by Larry Gentile. Good evening. My name is Christy Landorf. I live at 77 Green Valley Drive in Naperville. I am also the president and chief executive officer of Little Friends here in Naperville. I am here this evening on behalf of hundreds of adults and children with autism and other developmental disabilities that we support in this community. I am also, as I said, a Naperville resident and the parent of two small children and the daughter-in-law of a mall walker. I feel compelled to point that out. Uh, recreation, as you all well understand, is an essential component of the physical and emotional health of all human beings. The adult clients that Little Friends supports across more than 30 fully integrated homes in the Naperville community are no different. However, there is a significant challenge to integrating them into an active and recreation-filled life in our community because of a simple lack of space. We uh, transport our clients hundreds of miles every month outside of the Naperville community to access space that is simply not available here. It is catch as catch can in terms of facility availability. And I will be the first to confess that the challenges of geography and logistics frequently work against us. In the winter months, we borrow space from the Knights of Columbus or we use the rooms in our own schools, but that is clearly after hours and at off times and, and that's simply not convenient. The Park District's commitment to increasing the indoor activity space will absolutely have an immediate and meaningful impact on our clients. For the children and families that we support, I simply cannot put into words what a difference, as others have alluded to, that local community integrated activity space will make. Many of us have experience with juggling the work day, a child's school schedule, dinner, and then needing to get your child to their soccer practice or their dance class. If you are going to throw a long commute into that for a child with autism, more often than not, the child is going to miss out because that is simply an insurmountable hurdle for that family. Our families and the children that Little Friends supports face so many hurdles and challenges every day. I applaud the Park District for wanting to be a part of the solution to some of those challenges. Finally, as a parent and private taxpayer, I commend you for recognizing that this is an absolute real need. At the risk of revealing my age, more than 30 years ago, I participated in Naperville Park District activities at the barn. I am consistently blown away that I am taking my two children after as much influx in population and development in this town to the barn. Um, with due respect, it is a facility that is well past its prime. I am also paying a significant amount of money to an activity center right across the boundaries for all the rest of my children's activities, and I frankly would much rather keep my money in Naperville. I've appreciated Mr. McGurry's assurances that the Park District does not seek to build the Taj Mahal, which is a very real concern in these times. But there can be no misunderstanding that for adult and child alike, with and without disability, the activity center is need and not a want. 
It is not an extravagance to have a place where members of our community can come together in recreation, participate in activities, and be included. Thank you for your time. Christy, thank you. Larry? Larry Gentile, 4048 Broadmoor Circle, Naperville. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm here as the president of the Wheatland Athletic Association. And on behalf of the board of directors and the 12,000 participants in our program, I would like to endorse and support the building of this facility. I think the arguments that I would like to make tonight are very similar to what you've heard uh, uh, from the people uh, that have already spoken. I think there's a certain irony here. Uh, part of the problems that we face are uh, you know, the school has had to cut, the school districts have had to cut back on their programming because of downstate lack of funding. The irony here is that here you have a governmental body trying to solve the problem, and I applaud their effort. Uh, their fiscal responsibility has always been amazing. They've been solvent. Kudos. Great management. Uh, I think the building of this facility is timely, it's appropriate. I think. Um, when you see a great program like WASDRA, WASDRA going outside of our community, when you see our program, the 12,000 participants that we have going outside of our community for programming, uh, we can do it in-house. We can do it, we can stay home and do our own programming. Uh, I think the timing and the building of this facility is appropriate. Uh, I'm here to lend that support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Jackie, who's our next speaker? Next speaker is Russ Pollock, followed by Adeline, uh, Adeline Weinhold. Um, good evening. Um, Russ Pollock, uh, 4228 Chaparral Drive. Um, I don't know how I compete with some of the things that have been said so far, and um, I come here in general support of the entire uh, land acquisition and the building of this activity center. Um, I'm a parent of a child with special needs, an 11-year-old son who's severely um, impacted with autism. Um, this facility provides us with a tremendous resource. Um, it's something that uh, provides choice, optionality, whether or not a spur of the moment spontaneous stuff or programming that Webster is providing. Um, it's a very interesting um, solution for us that we just haven't had for at least nine of the last 11 years of our lives. Prior to that, we lived in Aurora, where we, we had access to the Eola Community Center and the Vaughan Athletic Center. Um, we used those quite regularly while we lived in Aurora. Uh, like I said, we are in great support of this. Um, I think you'll find countless other families living with special needs that are in support of it as well. Uh, in addition to that, I can speak for myself and my family in general, where I have a neurotypical nine-year-old daughter they would participate as well. We've heard a lot about seniors and a lot about um, special needs tonight, and it's all good, but I also think there's a great need. The community, this is what you know. we moved to Naperville for, for these types of products, these types of services. Um, it's a great community. It's what really we expect out of Naperville, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, it's come to this and that uh, it's time. So with that, thank you, and have a good night. Russ, thank you very much. Good evening, my name is Ida Lynn Wenhold, 5071 Switchgrass Lane, Naperville. I'm the executive director of Kids Matter, and Kids Matter is a not-for-profit organization that's all about prevention. It's about helping kids say no to destructive choices and yes to endless possibilities. And we believe that this activity center will allow kids to see endless possibilities. There are four key reasons that I feel it's a necessity. One is it's for kids in the middle. As you probably know, research shows that it's the hours between the time that school gets out and parents who work get home that many of our kids fall into at-risk behaviors, whether it's drugs, alcohol, getting online, involved in bullying. It's also a time when many of our young people are isolated. Research shows that one out of five young people experience adult depression before their adult years. We believe that this activity center 
will provide those kids in the middle with a place to belong, a place to participate, a place to go. Secondly, we believe it's a place for kids who don't make those really competitive sports teams. We have great schools and we have great athletics, but as you know, if any of you weren't on the varsity or junior varsity teams, there are a lot of kids who are passionate about sports, but they're just not able to make those teams. They're not able to make the dance team or the palms team. And we believe that this facility, this activity center, will allow them to participate in intramural programs, something that Naperville does not have, pickup games, things that they could become involved with if they're not involved with varsity level, junior varsity sports. Third point, it would be a place for kids with special needs. And I am so inspired by what I've heard tonight. You are all just incredible. And we too believe that for the 10,000 families in Naperville that have children with special needs, this would be an ideal place. Many of the schools have great programs. They also look for places during the school day to go. And we don't have those places for them. I know at the church that I belong, they bring a group to that church just to have them off site. This would give these children another place to go and a place that they could constructively get involved in activities and programs. And then the last reason is that we do have 70 plus faith communities in Naperville. Very few of them have gyms. These youth groups need a place to play. Wouldn't it be fantastic to have a place where the faith community youth groups could come together for friendly competitions? I really see that this activity center could afford those groups a place to have dodgeball and volleyball and also just come together as groups from the various faith communities to mix and mingle and, and just have fun. Bottom line, I totally believe that this is a necessity. It would provide our kids with a place to play, a place to grow, and a place to belong. Thank you. Idle and thank you. Jackie, do we have any other speakers? No more speakers. Any other discussion on this motion uh, from the commissioners? Commissioner Ori. I, I just want to thank uh, Ray and the staff that have done a tremendous job of uh, getting us to where we're at now. I've been on the commission uh, quite a few years and I've seen other aborted efforts to provide some indoor space and and uh, for various reasons those have not come to fruition I think we're on the cusp of making this a reality and probably uh, you all have uh, set the bar pretty high and the expectations are great on what we're going to be able to do and and I recognize the reality is we got a budget to live with and we probably will not meet everyone's uh, activity needs along the way, but this is a, a really good start on getting us there. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, Jackie, will you please take the roll on this motion? Sure. Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes. At this time, we're going to proceed with the rest of our meeting. Uh, you're certainly welcome to stay here for the entire meeting if you like, but we know you've got a busy schedule, so if you take off now, we won't be offended. Run. <laughs> and then uh, we'll go ahead and move on with, uh, with matters from the public. Jackie, is there anyone else that has signed up to speak uh, on a topic other than the one we just heard about? Okay, so hearing none, we will move forward with updates and reports. And we'll start with the Riverwalk Commission update, Commissioner Heidi. Thank you, President Janner. The Riverwalk Commission met on November 13th. The capital budget is 45% consumed, while the operating budget is 64% spent. These figures track favorably with the progression of the fiscal year. Chuck Papanos presented our Riverwalk Eatery concept to the Planning, Development, and Construction Committee last week, and the reaction was very favorable. There was some concern relative to, 
to the control of alcohol consumption and the perceived competition with downtown restaurant tours. The commission was assured that both issues had been discussed and were being addressed in our usual diligent manner. The concept for the 430 South Washington property was presented at the previous meeting, and this was also met with favor. The emphasis will be on the beautification of the open space instead of add adding numerous amenities. Finally, the fate of the south extension of the Riverwalk should be determined in early 2014. At this point, everything looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Heidi. We'll now move on to the Finance Committee update. Commissioner Ori. There has not been a, a, a Finance Committee meeting since our, our last meeting. Uh, we're scheduled to have a Finance Committee meeting in early December. Just a couple of financial remarks. If you look at the Treasurer's report, which we'll address shortly, it shows a almost $10 million surplus for the fiscal year. Uh, that's uh, two reasons. Uh, one, we just received our uh, second tax increment uh, in September. That reflects the end of September status. And we've got uh, lots of bills to pay between now and the end. So that, nine, that $10 million will, will be well spent in the next few months. The second thing is um, I think we'll, President Jenner will address the next meeting. Uh, the board's budget is in draft form or the Park District budget is in draft form and we will discuss that on Monday. Thank you, Commissioner Ori. The next update will be the Legislative Committee update. Commissioner Heidi. You threw me off there, President Janner. Uh, the Legislative Committee met this morning, actually, and dis discussed several notable items. First on the agenda was grants. The Park District recently submitted two important grant applications. A SECA grant application through the City of Naperville was submitted in hopes of defraying the cost of adding ADA accessibility and various other amenities to sportsmen's. We will learn the results of the submission in May. Also, an alternative energy grant application was submitted so that solar panels can be added to, to the support building at Nike Park. If, the, if this grant is received, the solar panels will have a rapid ROI and will serve as a model to evaluate the efficacy of adding solar to other park buildings. Second was legislative issues. We continue to work on House Bill 1525 regarding stormwater fees and the need to separate net stormwater receivers from net shedders. Additionally, Executive Director McGurry and our venerable attorney, Dirk Price, are looking at the possibility of bringing back the popular doggy dip at the beach. This involves some work with the Illinois Department of Public Health. Our next meeting is January 16th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Heidi. The next uh, update will be the Parks and Recreation Committee update. Vice President Riley. Thank you, uh, President Janet. The Parks and Rec Committee met on uh, October 18th of this year. The committee continued their discussion on the use of honeybees at the community garden plots. Director Finnegan reviewed a recent meeting with staff at the garden plots to identify potential location for the hives. Beekeeping will be accomplished through the training of staff and volunteers, and staff is currently reviewing terms of an agreement to establish the hives. Honeybees at the garden plots will be discussed with the full board at an upcoming meeting. Uh, discussion also continued on the proposed installation of a peace pole per the request of resident Vasavi Chaka. Director Finnegan discussed two potential locations at Veterans Park. The pros and cons of each location were shared. Uh, Director Schutz contacted the city since they are the property owner of the city. Staff informed him that they do not have concerns with the proposed installation. The resident who requested the peace pool is currently out of the country. When she returns, they will visit the site with her to review the locations and report back to the committee. In new business, uh, Director Wilson shared a recent resident request to change Ordinance 641 to allow non-motorized remote control sailboats to be used at the paddle boat quarry. Director Wilson shared concerns with placing the sailboats on the paddle boat quarry. Other bodies of water in the park district system may be better suited. Uh, Director Finnegan informed the committee he will reach out to other park districts to gather information as to how they handle uh, sailboats. 
The agenda item will be discussed further at the next committee meeting. Director Stanish led an overview of the 2014 budget. Director Wilson shared that planning recently formulated the 2014 capital budget and submitted for inclusion in the 2014 budget document. Director Wilson provided the committee with an update on recreation items, including the garden plot gleaning, the early childhood program manager and the nature center manager interviews, and a recent school district 203 inquiry about a possible future par partnership on a synthetic uh, turf athletic field in the Knock Park area. Next meeting of the committee will be held on November 15th, which is tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. in the administrative boardroom. Thank you, Vice President Riley. The next uh, update is the Golf Committee update. Commissioner Todd. The latest uh, meeting of the Golf Committee was October 21st. The committee reviewed the September month ending golf uh, funding numbers, and the September numbers were near budget or above in nine of the 10 revenue engines. Um, 2013 year to date budget and prior year comparison numbers are, are down. Uh, the committee also discussed the 2013 uh, fees and a proposed 2014 fees. Our proposed fees are still below the, um, our 2010 fees. So, uh, Next, the committee discussed the proposed renovation options, which was uh, for, for Springbrook and Naperville clubhouses, which was presented at our last workshop. Um, there's two announcements regarding golf. One is that this Saturday, November 16th, Reservations for the an annual turkey shoot will be made at, can be made at Naperbrook Golf Course. Reservations must be made in person. Uh, this year we're going to hold three tournaments which will be offered the weekends, the weekend of November 22nd and 23rd. Once again, we will accept donations to benefit loaves and fishes. Uh, golfers may donate their prize turkey or provide a monetary donation. Last year the golfers raised more than $1,100 to benefit this food pantry. Uh, secondly, when the temperature drops, there's no need to put away the clubs till spring. The golf simulators are back at Springbrook. They will be made available through mid-March. Leagues and lessons will be offered, and for more information on either of these activities, check the website, golfnaperville.org. And the next meeting for the um, golf committee will be Monday, uh, the 18th at 7.30 a.m. at Springbrook. Thank you, Commissioner Todd. The next update is the board president update. As always, the fall has been a very busy and eventful time here in the Naperville Park District. Members of our board and staff participated in the National Recreation and Park Association's annual Congress in Houston, Texas from October 8 through 10. This represented a great opportunity for our board and staff to participate in educational sessions on best practices in park district administration network with other park district and recreation professionals, and see new and innovative product offerings from hundreds of vendors. On October 27th, the Naperville Park District held its annual Halloween happening event at the Naperville Riverwalks Grand Pavilion area. The festival was free for all children 10 and under, and most kids came in full costume. We had record-breaking attendance, over 5,000 attendees, largely due to the efforts of our park district staff and volunteers. I suppose a beautiful sunny day may have had something to do with it as well. Thanks to everyone that stopped by uh, and thanks for uh, celebrating Halloween with us. Uh, on November 10th, the running community converged on Naperville for the inaugural Edward Hospital Naperville Marathon. Naperville resident and North Central College graduate Jonathan Muscotti was the men's winner and first overall marathon finisher and Amanda Marakna, a Naperville native who graduated from Nequa Valley High School across the finish line as the women's winner. Please join me in congratulating both Jonathan and Amanda on this wonderful accomplishment. Please also join me in recognize our own executive director, Ray McGurry, who coordinated security for the Naperville Marathon, along with Park Police Chief Carl Schnibben and Lieutenant Mike Harrington, who did a phenomenal job of assisting in the overall security plan. During the marathon, a 38-year-old male runner was making his way through the Springbrook Forest Preserve portion of the marathon when he collapsed and went into full arrest. Four volunteer nurses began CPR on him, and our own police officer, Mike Kuranek, pulled up and provided the AED that was used to administer a life-saving shock to the victim, who was subsequently able to walk, uh, walk away, walk to an ambulance, and after being revived. What a great story about the importance of preparedness and teamwork. So on behalf of everyone here at the Naperville Park District, uh, big thanks to those nurses and everyone involved. 
And uh, finally tonight, after many meetings and much discussion, our Board of Commissioners has voted on a purchase of land on the corner of Fort Hill and Quincy Avenue next to Players Indoor Sports Center and the City of Naperville Public Works Facility. This property is obviously intended for a future development of a Naperville Park District Activity Center. We heard from a lot of speakers and uh, heard a lot of great comments here from the public tonight, and I thought it'd be worthwhile for just a minute or so uh, to hear from us. The proposed activity center will be an excellent amenity for Naperville residents of all ages and will fill a major void in our community, especially in the winter months. Further, it will effectively address uh, health and wellness, which is one of our Park District's core values, and residents have given us clear direction in the last three community interest and opinion surveys conducted over the past nine years. Naperville needs more indoor programmable space. Our vision uh, with regard to planning and construction of the activity center uh, will be to do so in a way that's consistent with other recent projects. The Nike Sports Complex, for example, very heavily used by residents along with Seeger Park Interpretive Center and the Centennial Beach renovations. These projects were completed on time, under budget, and illustrated excellent financial stewardship. And I have every confidence that our executive director, leadership team, and staff will be able to accomplish this on behalf of our residents. So very excited about the tremendous benefit an activity center will have for Naperville and about continuing to engage residents in dialogue about this topic in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you. Uh, our next uh, report will be the executive director update, uh, Executive Director McGurry. Thank you, President Janner. A couple of things to talk about here. Uh, the Nipple Park District's uh, Winter 2014 Program Guide will be delivered to residents' doorsteps beginning Thursday, uh, November 14th, which is today. The virtual program guide is available now on our website at www.naplevilleparks.org. On Monday, November 18th at 8.30 a.m., resident online registration begins for all our winter programs. Tuesday, December 3rd at noon, resident online registration for girls, spring, youth soccer, and premier soccer will begin. And then following the next day on Wednesday, December 4th at noon, resident online registration for boys, spring, Naperville youth soccer, and premier soccer begins. Um, Tis the season of thinking of others. The Naperville Park District is proud to offer a variety of ways for our residents to help those who are less fortunate. Uh, through Friday, November 14th, our preschoolers are collecting change uh, donations for their seventh annual Pennies for Pies drive to benefit loaves and fishes. All donations received will go toward purchasing pumpkin pies for the food pantry's Thanksgiving food program. Donations may be brought to our administration building, which is located at 320 West Jackson, the Alfred Rubin Riverwalk Community Center, which is located at 305 West Jackson, or our 95th Street Center, which is located at 2244 West 95th Street. Our administration building at 320 West Jackson is also collect is a collection site for the annual Rotary Club of Naperville, Sun uh, Naperville Sunrise Club. Through December 6th, please donate coats, jackets, hats, and other winter outerwear. Donations received will benefit several uh, uh, area organizations that serve those uh, with a need for these types of items. And the district's police uh, department will once again be participating in the annual Toys for Tots drive. Six uh, collection sites are being hosted by the district, which are listed on our website, and the drive will run through December 13th. Uh, planning on frying a turkey for Thanksgiving? Well, are you? <laughs> Just don't do it on your wooden deck. Having 28 years of police experience, that does not go well. I can tell you that right now. Um, what are you going to do with all that used cooking oil on, sa <laughs> on Saturday? Well, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to tell you what you're going to do with it, so just hang on. On Saturday, November 30th, Naperville residents can bring their used cooking oil to be recycled free of charge at a post-Thanksgiving recycling event being hosted by the City of Naperville, Scarce, and Green Grease Environmental. The recycling drop-off uh, center will accept used cooking oil at room temperature. That would be helpful and pour it into a container of, or milk jug from 9 a.m. to noon. Motors are asked to enter the center from, one way, from the one-way drive via, via Fort Hill Drive. This will not be amenity. This will not be one of the amenities at the new activity center there down the road. So if those from the press, you can please print that. Then. We will not be bringing grease inside there. Uh, the Naperville Park District will host its fourth annual Holiday Lights Recycling Program in partnership with the Elgin Recycling Com uh, Company beginning November 18, 2013 and ending February 14, 2014. Residents and businesses are invited to bring their old, non-working lights to any of the three locations throughout the district. The district will receive a rebate of approximately 15 cents for each pound of lights recycled. 
which will be used to support the district's ongoing environmental initiatives. Again, further details on this program and many others can be located on our website. I'm almost done. The district will host three upcoming meetings for residents to be part of the equipment selection for several playgrounds that will be constructed in 2014. An open house for the Buntwood Park will take place on Tuesday, December 3rd. Open house for Wildflower and Harris Farewell Park will be on Thursday, December 5th. And the open house for East Greens and Old Farm Park will be on Tuesday, December 10th. All meetings will be held from 5.30 p.m. till 7 p.m. at the Park District Planning Office, which is located at 425 West Jackson. Both parents and children are welcome to attend. And if you cannot attend one of those meetings, uh, we provide access via the email um, to, to give your input on, on those things. We often know that times people can't get here for that, but we, uh, we strongly encourage you to communicate with us by email or phone um, if you can't make these meeting times. And then finally, with the holidays just around the corner, the Park District is getting ready for Santa House 2013. Although Santa House will be open to the general public beginning Friday, December 6th, we'll have some special nights coming up earlier in the month. Online reservations are currently being taken for special needs night on December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Pet night on December 10th, and military and first responders night on December 11th. Visit www.navalparks.org backslash Santa House to make your reservation. For more information on Santa House and its general operating schedule, please visit our website or check out the winter 2014 program guide for details. Thank you. For my Thanksgiving dinner, I'm leaning towards a frozen Swanson TV dinner. Thank you, Executive Director McGurry. And let's uh, move forward then to the Treasurer's Report. Move to approve the September 2013 Treasurer's Report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Jack, will you please take the roll? Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda at this time? Move to accept the consent agenda items. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Jackie, would you please take the roll? Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Move to approve the consent agenda as accepted. Second. This is, we have a motion and a second. This is a voice vote. Uh, if in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Uh, we'll move on then to, uh, to new business. Uh, item B in new business is a resolution establishing estimate of funds to be raised by taxation for the 2013 levy year. Move to approve resolution 13-06, establishing estimate of funds to be raised by taxation for the 2013 levy year. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Jack, will you please take the roll? Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Future meetings, uh, the next regular meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners will be November 18th, 2013. That's Monday, 5 p.m. at the South Maintenance Facility, uh, Lunchroom 3415 Book Row. This is the uh, budget meeting that was uh, referred to earlier in the meeting. Uh, after that, the next regular meeting will be December 12th, 2013, right here in uh, Council Chambers, 400 South Eagle Street. And the uh, meeting subsequent to that will be December 16th, 2013, uh, 6 p.m. back at the South Maintenance Facility, 3415 Book Road. Move to adjourn the November 14th, 2013 regular meeting. Second. Executive session. No. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Dirk goes wrong. Note that in the minutes. So we'll go to exec. We'll uh, adjourn to executive session. Move to adjourn to executive session to discuss land acquisition under 2C5 of the Open Meetings Act and personnel under 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Jack, will you please take the roll? Sure. Vice President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. President Janner? Yes.